This is Parahan, and you are listening to the Parahan Show. You know, I'm an avid outdoorsman, and I I spend a lot of time outdoors. And I often wonder, and I, I love to hear people's stories about strange encounters or creepy things that they've experienced out in the woods. And I got some creepy stories that I wanted to share with you tonight that have happened to me over the years. And if you want to, go ahead and comment any of your uh, creepy stories you might have had, things that have happened to you out in the woods, you know. So this first story happened many, many years ago. Uh, Back when I was in school, there was this uh, guy that I went to school with, and his name was Jonathan And I didn't know him too well, but all I can say about Jonathan is that he was a very odd guy. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know. I don't have an issue with that, and I I don't want to, you know, make fun of this guy. But he was just very strange, and he didn't like to talk to people. He kind of wanted to do his own thing. He stayed to himself. And, you know, if you ever tried to talk to him, he'd just kind of push you away. And you could tell he didn't want to have a conversation. So everybody just let him be, you know, and they just left him alone. And one of the things I remember about him is every day in school, he would be drawing these weird, uh, you know, shapes on his notebook And he wouldn't do his homework. He wouldn't like pay attention to school. He would just draw on his notebook, you know, every day. And it was like these strange geometric shapes. And I'm not trying to hate on that because maybe that was his hobby. I don't know. But anyways, to get how this connects to a creepy story in the woods, uh, you used to see Jonathan around town always by these parks, by the woods, You would see him walking the train tracks, you know, and and it was like you'd always see him in these weird spots everywhere around town near the woods or near the train tracks. And uh, so one night, a couple buddies and myself, we decided to go out for a night hike out in the woods. And there was this trail near the house and we started hiking the trail and it was about About 11 o'clock, I would say, somewhere in there. And we're hiking this trail. And one of my buddies says, you know, wouldn't it be funny if, like, just Jonathan walked out of the woods? And we all kind of laughed. And about 20 minutes after that, off in the distance uh, on the trail, we can see some sort of shape coming up on the trail like it's a person. And then finally that person, you know, comes into view to where we can actually see them. It's Jonathan. And he's out there in the middle of the woods. And not only is it Jonathan, but Jonathan has a shovel and like a burlap bag in his hand. And we're kind of like, okay, this is weird, you know, but we're like, hey, Jonathan, what's up, man? What are you doing out here? And he doesn't say anything to us. He just like walks by us and continues on the trail, goes past us. So the next day, like my friends and I were were kind of discussing what happened that night. We're like, you know, you don't think that he actually like buried a body out there or something, do you? You know, like, is this something weird? And uh, so we decided to go back there during the day and kind of just snoop around and see if like we could find any place that looked like you know it it had been dug dug out right so we go out to the woods and we're looking around and we noticed there was this spot right around where we seen jonathan and it looked like the dirt had been disturbed like someone had dug there and then filled it back in so we had a shovel and we start we dig it up this hole and we get it down about probably about a foot, and we find this burlap bag. And we were like, oh, no, you know, what are we going to find in this bag? And we open up the bag, and there is 
like 15 VHS tapes in the back. And that was it. And I don't, we don't exactly know why did this dude just bury 15 VHS tapes out in the woods? Like, what's the point? So we thought maybe there's something on the VHS tapes. So we brought them back to the buddy's house and we put them in one by one, you know, and they were all regular movies, you know, everything from Pocahontas to, um, I think Die Hard and, um, you know, Lethal Weapon. They were just regular VHS tapes. And for some reason, he buried these VHS tapes in the ground. It, you know, just didn't really make sense. Um, and that was the first uh, encounter, we weird encounter we had with Jonathan out in the woods. Um, the second time, we were walking these train tracks, which actually go through a very heavily wooded area. And as we're walking the train tracks, out of the woods steps Jonathan. Same thing, man. He's got a shovel and a sack in his hand. And he just walks right past us, doesn't say anything, doesn't even look at us. And, uh, you know, we kind of looked around that area, but we didn't find anything. And a little bit after this, you know, after the, the school year ended, he went back to, um, or he, he left. And we never seen him again. And I don't know what happened to him or what his reasoning was for bearing these VHS tapes out in the woods. But um, it definitely, like I said, he was just a very odd guy, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. It was just very strange, you know, very kind of creepy almost to be out in the woods and, and see a dude with a shovel and a burlap sack because nine out of the ten times you're thinking it's, you know, something weird. In... Uh, 2010, I worked as a park ranger, and one of my uh, jobs essentially was at night, I would go to different forest preserves, and I would drive into the parking area and check to just make sure all the cars were gone. I'd go into the restrooms, make sure no one was in there, and kind of just check the property and make sure everybody had left. And... There was one particular forest preserve that I didn't really like to go to at night. It made me feel really uneasy. I think maybe because it was just so remote and it was so far out and, and there was nothing around, no one around. And so it just always gave me, you know, sort of an uneasy feeling. And one night I had to go there um, to close up. And so I get to this nature preserve and I drive up the um, road and I get to the parking lot and I'm sitting in the truck and um, I decided before I did my checks, I wanted to eat a sandwich that I had sitting in the truck. And um, I'm just, you know, sitting there eating my sandwich when all of a sudden... I hear like a loud whoosh sound over the top of the truck. And it's like something flew over the truck. And it was so big that I actually felt vibration on the truck, a little shake of the truck as this thing flew over the top of me. And I'm like, you know, whoa, that was a really big bird. And my assumption was maybe it was like an owl or something. Well, all of a sudden, in the direction of whatever this thing was that flew by me, out in the woods, right towards that way, I seen a bright light. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, what... What is this, like, what is this bright light, you know? And I didn't really connect the two at all. My, my thinking was, okay, there's a person out there with a flashlight 
and I got to go tell them, hey, you got to leave. So I get out of the truck and I start walking in the direction of this light that I see out in the woods. And as I'm going through the woods, I start heading towards this light and all of a sudden the light just flashes out. I don't see it anymore. And then that's when all of a sudden I hear another, you know, swoosh sound and I hear sort of like branches rattling around above the top of me like something just, you know, flew over the top of me. And then once again, another whoosh sound and it's like now it's flying from the opposite direction towards me, over the top of me, moving through the branches and whatever this thing is. It is very large and significantly large by the amount of movement from the trees and the sound that this thing makes. Um, so I'm a little freaked out. Okay, this is weird. I see the light, this thing that just flew over my truck, right? It's flying over me in the woods. I have no idea what this is, an owl. I don't know. And all of a sudden, I start hearing like... Uh, some sort of chance, you know, and it sounds like the the best way I could describe it was like a powwow was going on and people were sort of having a powwow, you know, and making the um, chance that they would do during a powwow is what it sounded like to me. And it sounded like there was a large group of people making these chants all around me. And I got just very uncomfortable and I felt very uneasy. I'm like, you know, I want to get out of here. So I, you know, just take off running and I run back to the truck. And something really odd was the truck door was open and I had closed it when I had gotten out, but the truck door was open and the key was in the ignition turned to where it wasn't on, but it had turned the power on. And I'm like, okay, this is weird. I'm out of here. So I got out of there, and I don't think I actually locked up the force preserve that night because I was so terrified of what had just happened. Um, and about a week after that, I was talking to one of the other park rangers that I work with, and I told them, I said, you know, uh, out at that forest preserve, you know, that's way out there, I, I had a really weird encounter or experience. And the other park ranger says to me, oh, I, I totally believe you because, uh, you know, that place um, all the time, man, people say weird stuff happens there that apparently at one time... Uh, Native Americans had lived there and it was an old village or something and, and and there's several legends that say that once there was a village there and something had happened but that place is uh, known by a lot of the other rangers as a place where a lot of weird stuff happens and um, so you know I would go there at night I really wouldn't get out of my truck I would go there check make sure no one was there and then I would leave right away. After that, that kind of um, put me on edge. And um, with that being said, though, you know, working as a park ranger, uh, there was only one other creepy thing that I had experienced. Um, I got a call on the radio from one of the other park rangers. They said, come over to this forest preserve. Uh, I need your help. So I got over to this um, forest preserve. And when we went over there um, and I meet this park ranger there, there were several deer carcasses strewn about this specific area, uh, this open field next to the woods. And, um, like, uh, my, um, or, you know, the park ranger was like, uh, we don't exactly know what happened here because normally when animals, um, you know, eat a deer, 
they don't let anything go to waste. They'll, they eat the meat, they eat the eyes, they eat a lot of the parts of the deer, right? And whatever had done this left the deers fully uh, the, intact, but almost, you know, had killed them in a style where the necks was sort of, the jugular was ripped out. And um, as if it, you know, was killing these deer for fun and it wasn't you know uh any sort of firearm or animal that looked like they had you know uh, killed these deers um and so he needed my help to basically clean this up and pick the the carcasses up and get the carcasses out of there and um it was a pretty eerie sight to see that many deers still intact but with their jugulars their throats pretty much missing and that was the only part of the deer that was gone and um it was pretty gruesome and to this day i don't know exactly what or who may have done that they never figured it out but um but other than that you know i didn't really have too many other creepy encounters working as a park ranger now this particular story is from an old friend of mine who was a avid hunter, outdoorsman, and he was just overall the kind of guy that if he told you something, you believed it. You took his word for it because he was that he, he was that honest and he always told you the truth and was always straightforward. So to this day, I, I believe that he encountered something out in the woods. Now, he was out on a hunting trip out in um, Idaho. And he said that they went up into the mountains to this spot that they hadn't hunted before. And apparently this guy that they were hunting with, his family owned a couple hundred acres out there in in the mountains up in Idaho. So they get, you know, up to their camping spot up in the mountains. And it's a pretty remote area. And they said that they were out in the woods and doing some hunting. And that night, you know, everything went pretty uh, chill. And then uh, late that night, they got to their uh, campsite and they got in their tents and they went to bed. At some point in the middle of the night, they heard a very loud scream or almost yell uh, of some sort of creature or animal. They, could, they, they said they didn't know exactly what it was. But it didn't sound like a mountain lion or, you know, anything that they had heard out there. But it was some sort of, you know, terrifying growl, scream sort of sound that resonated through the tent. And they woke up and they're in the tent. And they said they could hear something walking up to the campsite and it was like very large footsteps and then you know they heard uh, another set of footsteps and then another set of footsteps and they said it sounded like multiple animals creatures whatever they were were kind of moving around the campsite and so my friend said that him and the other guy that was in the tent with him they grabbed on to their firearms and were holding on to them because they thought maybe this is a bear, a mountain lion, you know, something like that. So they're in their tents and they're on edge now because it sounds like something is outside their camp. And so all of a sudden it sounded like whatever this was, it kind of just walked away and they figured okay, must be some sort of wildlife that came through and then left. So eventually they get back to bed. And then they're awoken about 
an hour and a half later to a large or a loud crashing sound. And they said it sounded like, you know, something had took a very large piece of metal and threw it against a tree and just, you know, launched it towards a tree. And um, they said it sounded like large metal hitting a tree. And that woke them up. And so they said they got out of their tents with their uh, firearms and they're sort of just looking around their campsite trying to figure out, okay, what was this loud sound? And that's when they said all of a sudden they seen rocks start flying out of the woods towards them like something was throwing rocks at them. So my buddy uh, said he took his firearm, pointed it up in the sky and fired it to kind of scare whoever this was away. But they just kept getting pelted with rocks. And then once more, he fired off, you know, up into the sky again. And they heard a loud growl, scream sound once again. And this kind of happened throughout the night. And throughout the night, they didn't get any sleep. They were outside just kind of guarding their campsite. So then the next morning, they kind of looked around for any evidence to try and figure out what this was. They couldn't fig find anything, you know, and they thought maybe like the, the, it was just some sort of animals or something that was stalking them or, or some crazy person out in the woods. But they really didn't um, want it to get in the way of them hunting. So the next night, they didn't have any issues. They, they went to bed, no problem, you know. The night after that, once again, you know, they had sort of the same occurrences, hearing sounds, hearing someone walk around the campsite. But then the next morning when they woke up, my buddy said he went outside his tent and there were three tents and around each tent were rocks positioned in a circle around the tents. And they were like, whoa, you know, who, who did this? Like, who would put rocks around the tent like that? And um, that shook them up pretty bad. And they said, okay, we're, we're going to end this hunting trip and, um, you know, call it there because it was getting too weird and they didn't know what would happen next. So they called it off. They decided to, to, to leave. And so they had to hike back to where their trucks were. And when they got back to their truck, all four tires on their truck was flattened. As if something had punctured all four tires on the truck. And, and then there was a large dent in the side of the truck. And it looked like sort of some sort of claw marks had went down the side of the truck. And they said, that, you know, they'd seen bears leave claw marks. And they've seen bears, you know, in that area. And they know what kind of, you know, claw marks that bears make. And how to track them and stuff from their claw marks. And tell, you know, what's a bear and, you know, what not. And they said, this looked like no bear. Whatever this was, was larger than a bear and was extremely powerful. And they drove out of there, you know, basically on the rims of their truck just to get out there to the nearest town, which I think was like 10 or 15 miles, and then went to a repair shop. And, um, but my buddy said to this day, you know, you couldn't pay him to go back there and hunt as much as he loves to hunt and he loves the outdoors. He said no amount of money. He would never go back to that place. And um, he said, you know, this is the only place where he had a weird encounter like that out in the woods. 
But yeah, I mean, if you have any strange stories that you have that happen to you out in the wilderness, I'd love to hear about them. You know, leave a comment, drop a comment below, share your story with everyone. Thanks for listening. I'm Parahan. Peace out.